title comes from a passage in an old document by Thomas Lodge. Fire cannot be hid in the straw, nor the nature of man so concealed, but at last it will have its course. I found that that described exactly how I felt, that there had been a small fire hidden in a lot of the straw, the complexities, the dangers, the worries, that this little flame was something lovely and good and powerful. I wanted it to burst forth from the straw. school, uh, I studied with a very great professor of insurance who said that he had gone down to the Congress and said, we have got to put a dollar value on the human life. I couldn't forget that phrase. And when I lived in the tiny room, reading and trying to find my way into the world of literature, I kept thinking that what I wanted to put onto a human life was not a dollar value, but an understanding of what we were doing here where we were going. And I began to find the meanings for all this in the world of literature. Some of it was in the, the discovery in a poem, uh, like one by Rilke called The Archaic Torso of Apollo. It has no head, but at the end he says, there is no part of this work of art, no part of this sculpture that does not see you. You must change your life. And literature did that to me. I had changed from having been a graduate of the Wharton School to uh, an English professor. It was one of the great momentous moments in my life. It may not seem like much of a change, but I dare anybody to study insurance for four years and then start reading Milton and Shakespeare. It's a big switch. The switch which took place over a period of three or four years, was very interesting to me. And I thought that that would be a good part of an autobiography. It um, had uh, all the qualities of drama, and I didn't know what was going to happen when I came out the other side. Where I had been a very perfunctory student, suddenly I became the custodian of all the great things I had learned and wanted to share with all of the people in my classes. And I could cry out, I am Hamlet, or I am Falstaff, or I am a character from any one of a dozen books. I became these people. They went through me almost like wine through water and colored every part of me. I became another human being. And that human being was someone I liked a lot more. It was so scary a move and it was so profound a discovery that every time I think of it, I, I feel a great sense of, of joy that it happened, uh, thankfulness that there is a world of literature for anyone who will look at it and find it. Uh, she was here, and she's gone, and Paul is gone, and their absences are raw and pungent, and their memories precious. several pictures of me in the boarding school, a place where I had many deep and unpleasant experiences, but also the astonishing experience of discovering uh, this world of fishing, which I still to this day cannot fully explain. But the discovery of standing in water with a fishing pole, with the line out and the little bobber bouncing on the water. Um, I have the sense that I was touching another world. I 
thought for a long time how the book should end. It wasn't going to end when I got the Nobel Prize for writing about fishing. What was it that would draw it to a conclusion? I think partially it was two deaths, and it seemed to be the closing off of a certain part of my life. I got to the pond because the pond became a place that reflected in many ways qualities of my life. I always wondered whether I could find the ark and see what that ark was of a life, of my life. And I think in this book, I've done just that. There is a noise below me in the sloping field, a whirring of wings. It is merely a flock of crows rising from the high grasses, making the air tremulous in their departure. Like all those years of fear and doubt, and striving of joy and love, rising, fluttering, and then in a crazy crowd, gone. <laughs>